And what I find uh, particularly um, infuriating is the current acting ICE director has publicly said that the ICE moniker is toxic. I mean, that's offensive. Rather than standing shoulder to shoulder with their colleagues and pushing back against the false narrative of those that have demonized ICE for a very long time, he's capitulated uh, to that moniker. I mean, think about this. So what's he going to have? An organization that half of it is not toxic and the other half that is toxic? It's ridiculous. And as you stated, as we're experiencing the worst illegal immigration crisis in our lifetime, they want to take half of the immigration enforcement organization and separate it from enforcement immigration. I, I, I mean, it's just absurd. And there's no operational justification for this. But I tell you what, Secretary Mayorkas fully supports this, Jan. Why? Because this has been part of his goal is to start eroding our ability to enforce immigration in the country. And it's one step closer to eliminating ICE. So what you just heard is a clip from Mark Morgan, the former head of Customs and Borders. So he was talking about comments that the acting ICE director has made about ICE. And basically what he was saying that working with ICE or having ICE on the table with them will undercut the efforts to combat transnational crimes, but also create a toxic environment. So what they are saying is they want to still have DHS, but separate themselves from ICE. And here's why. Local politicians all over the country are now creating bills to force local law enforcement to work with ICE. The same ICE that they're saying that is toxic and they want to separate themselves from. So here we have ICE. Here we have Georgia, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Texas, and of course, North Carolina with House Bill 10. Our local government want to do the same thing that all the other local governments are doing around the country, forcing local law enforcement to work with ICE. But here's what they would always say to you about Charlotte, North Carolina, not cooperating with ICE. Local media has said it a hundred times. Each time you hear law enforcement talking about ICE, that means we are mandated by law in North Carolina to work with ICE. And here's why. North Carolina General Statute 162.62 mandates every sheriff in North Carolina to work with ICE. This is the part that they do not like. First part, we try to determine citizenship. When we don't determine the citizenship, we then contact ICE. That is what activates the detainer. So when we talk to ICE and we tell them that we have a person that we cannot determine their citizenship, they simply just send us a detainer. This is the part that our local law enforcement has to do because we are governed by North Carolina general statute. But the media say that we are not cooperating with ICE. Local politicians do not like C. C puts them in a bind because after someone has met all the criteria to be released on bond, we must release them by bond because a local judge orders us to release them. So you always hear the local media talk about this young man. This is the only poster child that they have to talk about. They use this back and forth and back and forth. They always use him as an example. But what they'll never tell you is this. He was deported in 2006. Local law enforcement don't know why. And we have no idea if any charges were brought against him or if the charges were brought. So imagine he was deported in 2006, but returned sometime in 2019. You will only hear local news and local politicians talk about him about the May 19th case. You will never hear them talk about why he was deported in 2006. That is very important. Deporting him back, ICE could have charged him with a federal crime after returning back to the United States. Simply charging him with that would have kept him inside the detention center. Immigration, putting the toxic burden on local law enforcement. 
This is what they're doing around the country, and this is what they're trying to do in Mecklenburg County and the entire state of North Carolina. I against House Bill 10, always will be against that bill because it brings the toxic environment that they are talking about. Thank you very much, Sheriff Gary McFadden, Mecklenburg County Sheriff's Office, Charlotte, North Carolina.